nanobots have been portrayed in movies like Big Hero 6, but you may be surprised to hear that they're now becoming a reality. They are autonomous, microscopic, and target-oriented. Also known as small robots and ranging from 1 to 100 nanometers in size, these tiny particles are transforming the whole world. Scientists are exploring different applications of nanobots in medicine and healthcare to fight cancer and unblock blood vessels. In today's video, we'll talk about the latest developments on nanobots happening around the world. We'll also take a deep look at what they are and what they can do in the context of biotechnology. Modern research suggests that nanobots could be a real solution and help medical professionals in complex tasks. On a lighter note, they are programmed to seek and destroy tumors with the ability to pass through the very tiny spaces in the human body. They can be an amazing discovery for highly targeted drug delivery to some specific cells within the body. It's not fiction anymore and has already been achieved. Nanomedicine scientists have successfully programmed nanorobots to find tumors and cut off their blood supply while leaving healthy tissue unharmed. Of course, nanomachines are very tiny, like 50,000 of them would fit across the diameter of a human hair. But talking about their effectiveness, they have the potential to pack a mighty punch in the fight against cancer. Apart from treating cancerous cells in specific areas of the body, scientists also believe that nanobots can treat plaque in veins. Thus, they can solve dietary issues as well as a whole slew of other alarming problems. These micro-sized particles can easily flow in the parts of the body where the blood flow is lower, such as capillaries in the eye, fluids outside the blood circulatory system, and the urinary tract. CRISPR clustered, regularly interspaced, short palindromic repeats. You might have heard of CRISPR, which isn't the only gene editing technology, but it exploits molecular DNA function. The editing process includes using the virus's natural ability to cut and splice the DNA we want to edit. It has a wide variety of applications, including fundamental biological research, development of biotechnological products, and treatment of diseases, such as destroying cancerous cells. CRISPR technology is more versatile, easier to use, and cheaper than a lot of other technologies. What surprises us the most is the speed of progress. Like in less than a decade, it's gone from discovery to human trials and potential cures, something that's practically unheard of in biomedicine. Before we get into the details of nanobots, let's have a look at their origin. Origin of Nanobots The idea of nanobots is entirely attributed to Richard Phillips Feynman, an American theoretical physicist and scientist in the Manhattan Project, who is known for his work in the path integral formulation of quantum mechanics and the theory of quantum electrodynamics. He earned the Nobel Prize for his work in the development of quantum electrodynamics. In 1959, he disclosed his ideas in the paper There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom and described the plan for medical use for Feynman's theoretical micro-machines. Feynman added that certain repair machines might one day be reduced in size and tons of information could be encoded in tiny spaces, paving the way for critical technological developments. He said that this technology would be so good that it could overcome Swallow the Surgeon in the future. Since nanorobots would be minute in size, it would probably be necessary for huge numbers to work together to perform microscopic and macroscopic tasks. So what is nano? Nanotechnology is science, engineering, and technology that includes manipulating matter with at least one dimension, sized from 1 to 100 nanometers. Let's put that into perspective. The size ratio of the Earth to a marble is almost the same as the comparative size of a nanometer to a meter. And a nanometer is a million times smaller than the length of an ant. Or we can say a nanometer is equal to the average man's beard growth in the time it takes him to raise the razor to his face. These nanorobots are about 25 times smaller than the width of a healthy human hair and are made from a combination of red blood cells, platelet membranes, and artificial gold wire. 
Surprisingly, the DNA double helix has a diameter around 2 nanometers, thus making it a suitable candidate as a base for nanorobots. The Mechanics of Nanobots These microscopic molecules have components that allow them to detect and bind themselves to a cancer cell. And when triggered with light, the nanobot's rotary chain of atoms begins to spin approximately 2 to 3 million times per second. This speed helps the nanobot penetrate the cancer cell and finally destroy it. Though still in its early phases, scientists believe that the research will one day provide a novel form of cancer treatment. Robert Paul, a professor at Durham University, believes that if achieved, this method may represent a significant advance in non-invasive cancer therapy and enhance the long-term survivorship and well-being of patients throughout the world. Nanobots in our veins Scientists at the University of San Diego have discovered that nanorobots can be very helpful in cleaning the toxins and pathogens from human blood created by harmful bacteria and viruses. Similarly, the destructive properties of the nanobots make them perfect for killing cancer cells. They can also be utilized to heal tissues that are damaged or sick at the molecular level. These nanomachines may someday act as a sort of circulatory system police in human bodies. Similarly, they might be used to find particular substances or poisons and inform people about impending organ failure or tissue rejection. Finally, there's a possibility that biometric measures may be used to track a person's overall health. Although this little technology is still a long way from being famous, it may revolutionize the world. How Nanorobots Kill Tumors To know the actual phenomenon, the researchers at the Arizona State University and National Center for Nanoscience and Technology of the Chinese Academy of the Scientists used a mouse tumor model. For this purpose, human breast, ovarian, melanoma, and lung cancer cells were injected into mice to spur tumor growth. Then, after they observed the tumor growth, the nanorobots were injected into the mice. Each nanorobot was made from a flat, rectangular DNA origami sheet, 90 nanometers by 60 nanometers in size. A key blood clotting enzyme called thrombin was attached to the surface. Nucleolin, a particular protein, was selected as a target for DNA aptamers, as large concentrations of this protein are exclusively present on the surface of tumor endothelial cells. This protein, unlike others, is not found on the surface of healthy cells. The nanorobots opened up and delivered the thrombin after locating and binding to the tumor blood vessel surface. This caused clotting in blood vessels that fed tumor growth, cutting off the blood supply, and killing tumor tissue. The surprising thing was that it happened very quickly. After a few hours, the nanorobots had all gathered around tumors, the tumor's blood supply was obstructed, and tissue damage was already started after just 24 hours. However, it did not affect healthy tissues. The nanorobots may have caused significant adverse effects if they had entered the brain, but there was no indication of that. Three out of eight mice receiving the nanobot therapy showed complete deterioration of the tumors. In mice, the researchers also discovered that the nanorobots were both safe and efficient in shrinking tumors. After a day and a half, the vast majority of nanorobots had been removed from the body. Median survival duration in the mouse model doubled from 20 days to 45 days, and I think it was pretty impressive for such an early trial. Dr. Santosh Kasari, a neurologist and neuro-oncologist and chair of the Department of Translational Neurosciences, says that there are some medicines that immediately travel to the tumor when they are injected, although tumor shrinking may take some time. But this strategy is faster than traditional approaches since it is not fighting the tumor's cell directly. Instead, it blocks the tumor's blood supply and causes symptoms comparable to a stroke which increases pressure on the tumor, blood clots occur quickly. The future of nanorobots. Until human clinical trials can be conducted, many questions will remain unanswered. However, the simultaneous use of nanoelectronics, photolithography, 
and novel biomaterials offers a viable method to produce nanorobots for common medical purposes, including operational tools, diagnostic, and medication delivery. Manufacturing on a nanoscale is used in the electronics sector, and it has been in use since 2008. This will enable remote operation and improved capabilities for medical instruments. According to Professor Huyang, one of the leading researchers, I think we're pretty close to the actual medical applications of this technology. Combinations of differently designed nanorobots carrying various agents may help to accomplish the ultimate goal of cancer research. This is a very important field in oncology when it comes to chemotherapy. Over the next few years, you'll see a movement away from the term even. It has many connotations for both physicians and patients, and we are entering a different era. In the next 10 to 15 years, nanobots will become an essential part of biotech that is a meaningful way to reduce cost. So what do you think about the nanorobots? Will this technology be able to reduce the death rate due to cancer? Do let us know in the comment section. If you're new to the channel, feel free to drop a like and subscribe to the channel, and we assure you that you'll enjoy watching our videos.